Welcome to Divine Couples. Your host, Naomi Slater, will awaken your passion, deepen your intimacy, and invite healing into your relationships. Working towards accessing higher levels of consciousness in all areas of your life. Come with us on this journey to explore and experience your fullest potential. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Naomi Slater, and you have tuned in to Divine Couples, adding intimacy, passion, and healing to your lives. Jessica and Alan met on a snowy day in January of 2007 at a university spirit event. While the rest of the participants were creating team spirit, Jessica and Alan were creating sparks of their own. They immediately clicked, spending countless nights lost in conversation and quickly declared their love for one another. Despite a few months spent living apart, the relationship blossomed. On Christmas Day in Vancouver, British Columbia, Alan proposed, less than a year into the relationship. In 2010, they were wed in an eco-friendly garden ceremony back home in Ontario. Two cats, two dogs, and three babies later, Jessica and Alan feel closer than ever. Fertility challenges and loss led to some really dark seasons of parenthood, but lately they feel so grateful to have reclaimed the spark that started everything. I love that so much. <laughs> Welcome, Jessica and Alan. Hi, Naomi. Hi, Naomi. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. How are you guys doing? Good. Happy to be here with you. Same. Excellent. So, so Jessica, you decided to turn to me for guidance on intimacy. What made you take that plunge? Yeah, so I was having a really hard time navigating our intimate relationship. Um, it just sort of felt like ever since I became a mom, um, it was really difficult to reclaim and even prioritize that aspect of our relationship. So I know I, I knew that I was really struggling personally, and I, I decided to investigate your work. I was familiar with it, and I wanted to see if maybe it would be a good fit to support us in reclaiming that spark um, that was so alive early on in our relationship. And so this year, actually, we celebrated our 10-year wedding anniversary, and we'd always had it on our minds that we would go on this epic trip. And we would go traveling, and we would connect and explore, and these were core values of our relationship early on. And so, of course, 10 years rolls around, and the pandemic hit. Um, all of our plans to travel went out the window, but I really sat back and thought, what does this relationship need right now? And I recognize that the intimacy was probably something that we could work on and heal, but we didn't know where to begin. And so I thought, okay, well, here's an investment that I can make um, since we're not going on the big trip that would really nurture the, the relationship that we have for one another um, and help me start making it a priority again. Oh, you guys are so amazing, and Jessica, you're so brave for turning to me because <clears throat> I went through something very similar, which is essentially why I do what I do, um, but it takes a, a lot of uh, courage to really ask for help and to take that plunge. So, so Alan, what was your reaction when Jessica told you she had hired an intimacy coach? Yeah, so... Um, I found it very, like, I was excited for Jessica, and, um, you know, beyond the excitement of bringing intimacy into our relationship, um, I was excited for her to be able to claim that aspect of herself back. Uh, we were sitting outside, just kind of socializing, talking about the fact that our 10-year anniversary was coming up, and um, how our plans were significantly different, and then Jessica shared with me that this was something that she had just done, was invested into this, and uh, and I was, all, I, I was excited for her. Uh, the journey through motherhood, Jessica had some, you know, self-conscious uh, views about her body, about her sexuality, you know, really kind of having to come to terms with the new form that she was in of being a mother and, and all the beauty that comes along with that. And so it was becoming a big barrier in our relationship uh, to the point where, you know, things were just, it was becoming 
overwhelming to even talk or, or make any intimate approaches towards each other uh, because there was just this looming kind of pressure to the whole thing with, with just how our relationship had settled. So um, I was really excited that that was the, the step that she had taken. Uh, I think it was a great investment into our relationship and as a sort of signifying 10 year anniversary uh, thing, it, uh, yeah, it, it was, it was a very, I thought it was a great choice then and a great idea that she had come up with. Oh, I'm to hear that. And so I want to hear from both of you, but what do you both think um, were some of the major challenges you were encountering as a couple, especially with having children? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I can really trace it back to when we began to try for a family because we faced some challenges around our fertility, uh, and then we did end up enlisting the support of some fertility doctors to help us navigate that, and within that journey, it almost seemed like our sexual relationship had become outcome-based and routine mm -hmm. from that point forward, and I mean, the reality is like we're parents to young children and so I was just exhausted by the end of the day um and it just sex had kind of just become one of these things that was simply something we were ticking off the to-do list and not really you know embracing everything that you've taught us along the journey of working together and I, I actually like had no idea how to regain that spark or how it would even be possible so yeah there was lots of challenges that we encountered um, at least that's from my perspective yeah I, I, I was you know I, I, I connect with a lot of that when we did the fertility treatment it turned it took away in the intimacy and it made it just like very structured. Here's a specific date, here's specific times, here's things to do. Like it, yeah. there was no more romance or love in it. It was like, okay, on the 15th day on this, you know, this is your most optimal time to, to be and intimate a baby. and, and to yeah. try to produce a baby. And that was our goal and our thing at the time. But in the journey it took for us in that, in both our children, or sets of children, um, we've, had, you know, it, yeah, it just took away that romance, and it was hard to find that again after the fact. And then as kids grow up, I mean, the time that they require of you and, and the demands and whatnot, uh, finding the time to be able to even have our own one-on-one, -on -one, it, it was just a, a monumental uh, obstacle to, you know, that we were facing. And uh, at the end of the day, we were tired. We didn't want to do anything there. In the morning, the kids were, you know, needy, demanding, you know, just normal but it requirements of yeah. being and so you know five years later after having children you know uh, it, it just we became very sort of um was it fair we were just easy with each other about just the, the day kind of going through our normal routines and never actually considering us as a relationship we were just focused mm -hmm. on being parents being you know doing or working taking care of the household but we were the about the last thing that we were considering mm -hmm. yeah i think the majority of parents experience that unfortunately and and it's so important. I mean, it's it's totally natural when that happens in the beginning after you've had a baby. The problem is, is that, you know, people don't know how to go back to being intimate. It's kind of like it gets lost and then people don't know how to, how to find their way back to having deep intimacy with their partners. So, um, so yeah, I think pretty much all parents experience, experience this on, on varying levels. Um, Alan, I'm really curious about what your personal struggle was in the intimacy in the relationship because you know I, I've heard more from from Jessica and kind of what her struggle was but how were you kind of feeling in, in the relationship when it came to intimacy um well I didn't I felt like our intimacy was just non-existent um we weren't doing the gentle touches the holding hands the the caressing just uh, the things that just showed affection throughout the the day um that weren't even leading to sex it was just uh, because there was such a pressure on or such this sort of elephant in the room around intimacy that anything like that was suddenly a 
oh, is she touching my hand because she wants to be intimate, or am I, get, you know, are we are we embracing for a little longer? Where do we take it? And then it just became pressure. It became stressful to the point where, you know, if we weren't ready or whatnot, I was just not even making the effort to try to engage or initiate or do anything because it just felt like, well, what's the point? You know, we're not doing this, so. Um, why, why set myself up for another set of rejection, rejection. Or, or another type of thing. And so then it just became, well, we're just not going to do that, right? And, uh, that, and that really impacted our, you know, the relationship from that standpoint because it's just, you know, we, were, we always found ourselves to be very connected whenever we did have our moments, um, as you should, but because they were so few and far in between, it, um, you know, it just it, it added a lot of stress to the relationship. Yeah, I can totally relate to that, and that's actually how uh, Navot and I, my husband, were also introduced to Tantra. It was around that time where he was feeling constant re- rejection by me, and, you know, every time he kind of touched me, I would, like, cringe, like, does he want sex with me now, and I'm so exhausted, and I have so many things to do, and um, so, so this is a very, very common script that I think so many couples are challenged by. Um, and I would love to hear from both of you, how did working with me change the way that you're intimate? Yeah, I feel like even answering that question, it's hard to know where to begin because (laughs) it's changed everything. Like even just listening to Alan's very honest reflection as to where we were at um, before and then considering where we are now, so much has shifted, um, physically, emotionally, um, so many different levels, but I just really feel like the biggest change is that our relationship is a priority in our lives. Like we talked about the kids and our work and the household, but our relationship is what started all of that. So technically it should be at the top of the list. Um, (laughs) <laughs> like it makes sense right and uh like you just get so busy as as parents I maybe you just don't think of it like that but um another thing that I feel really changed and I think this relates to just the casual um physical touch that Alan was just talking about is that we're so much more tapped into experiencing pleasure in our lives and realizing, like, moving away from that outcome base. So whether it's, like, right within our tantric dates or just daily life, I feel so much more tapped into pleasure. And uh, and with that has come a lot less tension in our household, um, which is wonderful. Mm. Wow, that is amazing to hear. So beautiful. <laughs> uh, ben, what about you? Yeah, no, I, uh, I mean, uh, I repeat a lot of what Jessica says there as far as how it, it, one of the big things that came out of it was our ability to communicate with each other. So um, some of the techniques you taught us on ways to have a, um, an effective uh, communication technique where we could talk about things that maybe were underlying challenges, problems, whatever, that maybe weren't even intimacy related, but impacted intimacy because you had some, mm. uh, you were resenting or holding on or, or had this thing in the back of your head of, oh, I really don't like that he didn't take the garbage out or didn't do this or whatever it might have been. But we, we let it build and fester inside ourselves to a point of becoming like a poisonous seed and then it wouldn't allow us to. Um, even have those intimacies because you were always kind of frustrated with them about something else that was really irrelevant. It was not even the big thing. It's just kind of masking the whole thing. And so when we got the tools to be able to communicate with each other in an effective way and really listen, acknowledge, and, and you know, frame it back to, the, back to each other uh, so that we could show that we have that understanding of it, they it significantly changed our relationship and to the point where we now introduce that into our regular intimacy dates of, of having that kind of conversation to to just get everything off the table before we move through with it um mm-hmm. daily general conversation any challenges we deal with on our day-to-day so it extends beyond the intimacy um and then yeah just really living in the moment of the of our intimacy not being goal-based not being 